Hello, I'm James Harvey, the Professor of Music Theory at the College of Southern Nevada with 5-Minute Music Theory. We'll start the timer and we're going to talk in this video about what are known as hidden or direct intervals. I'll put hidden and then in parentheses direct. These are the same thing, just different terminologies. So hidden intervals are called hidden because it's the effect of parallel or forbidden parallels, but they're somewhat hidden in the texture when this happens. So for hidden intervals to occur, we need to meet three criteria. Now, when writing, it's very easy to accidentally write hidden intervals, but when doing error detection, they're pretty easy to find because the first step that we need to have here is a leap in the soprano. So if there's no leap involved, if the soprano is moving by step, then there's no error there as long as we're looking for these hidden intervals. If there's a leap in the soprano, and the soprano and bass soprano and bass are moving in similar motion not parallel but similar motion then that's two out of three criteria met to uh, create hidden intervals and then the last is that the resulting interval resulting in a harmonic perfect fifth or perfect octave. And for hidden intervals to occur, all three of these criteria must be met. So let's see here. I'm going to write one like this. We'll go from a C, we'll go up to a G here. So that's gonna be the our perfect fifth. That's gonna be the resulting interval. And then I'm gonna move from a B and I'll move the base like this. So here's an example of a direct or hidden fifth. So what's happening is we have a leap in the soprano. There's the leap. From uh, My terminology is leap means anything larger than a, than a step. Sometimes you'll see skip or leap. But really it's when there's anything larger than a step is what we have to worry about here. So we do have that happening in the soprano. The soprano and bass need to move in similar motion. And if we look at the motion here, we have, uh, they are moving at least the same direction. The first interval is a fourth, and then that's moving into a fifth. So they are moving in similar motion. The resulting interval is a harmonic perfect fifth. So here's the error. That's a direct interval, and you would get a nice red slash through that if you were turning that in in an assignment. The same thing happens for perfect octaves. And let's go ahead and do a perfect octave and let's go the opposite direction. Let's go like this. I'm gonna make that soprano. It's gonna crash into my direct, but that's fine. And then I'm gonna move from a C like this and an E like this. This is a, a hidden octave because we do have a leap in the soprano from the C to the F. The soprano and the bass are moving in similar motion and the resulting interval is a perfect octave. And yes, it's the simple interval equivalent of a perfect octave, which essentially is a perfect octave. So just a quick summarization here of hidden or direct intervals. Uh, it's these three criteria which are on the screen. There needs to be a leap in the soprano and the soprano and bass moving in similar motion, resulting in a harmonic perfect fifth or perfect octave. And remember, this is considered an error. It's the same effect as forbidden parallels. It really is of the same. It's just hidden in the texture and a little bit harder to see. And when you're doing error detection, you don't have to worry about any of the chords unless there's a leap in the soprano, that first criteria met. But when you're part writing, be really careful about this, especially when uh, when you're writing your melody line and these leaps. That's why it's best to try to keep things as stepwise as you can. Thank you. <laughs>